My relationship with Raymond goes way, way back to The Snowman, which I animated on. I did the bit where the boy wakes up and goes out into the garden and builds the snowman. Uh, I also worked on Father Christmas and uh, When the Wind Blows as an animator. And then I had the opportunity in 2007 when the producer from TVC who, studio that did The Snowman and Yellow Submarine and When the Wind Blows approached me and asked me out to lunch and said, I've got this little thing I want to show you. And it turned out to be Ethel and Ernest's book, which I'd, I'd seen but never bought. Uh, and, you know, I, I just left it the chance because um, it's, most people think it's his masterwork, really, and, and all his other... All his other books have elements of the Ethel and Ernest story in them, even the characters. Um, Jim and Hilda Bloggs in When the Wind Blows is really Ethel and Ernest. Um, and then Raymond himself was a bit reluctant to give the project out to anyone else, but uh, John Coates persuaded him eventually, after a few liquid lunches, uh, <laughs> that he, he, you know, we could be trusted with it because we've done it before, and uh, and then unfortunately John Coates died in 2012 during the making of Snowman and Snow Dog, which was being done at Loops Films in London, and then Loops Films took the project on, and uh, there was a few years of trying to get the finance together, as there always is with feature films, but eventually we landed with Clothcat Animation in Cardiff and uh, a studio in Luxembourg called uh, Melusine Studio 352 and and we did some of the animation the hand-drawn animation in London some in uh, Luxembourg and Clothcat did the CG work with Sam uh, and the compositing and the ink and paint stuff so it was a wonderful wonderful collaboration and I, I spent many happy days down here in Cardiff and uh, I'm really pleased to be back here today yeah, I'll, uh, and also there's, uh, you know, for, for the purposes of this, uh, support from Phil McCamery and also Marsh Government as well on the film Indeed, yeah. uh, to help bring it to Wales. Um, so um, what I'd like to sort of go into then is actually the hand-drawn style because obviously Raymond's work is very traditional illustration. It suits that style. of the, the snowman was, was hand-drawn animation, When the Wind Blows, uh, Father Christmas. Um, but with this production, there's a lot more digital going on, but yes, it's still very traditional. So can you explain that process? That's right. Well, as I say, I started on the project in 2007 when we were still doing everything uh, on paper, drawing with pencils on paper. Uh, and we did Snowman and Snow Dog like that. And in that time, something called TV paint had emerged and is now pretty much a, an industry standard in animation for hand-drawn stuff where you draw on a tablet, a big tablet, like an old light box, and um, draw directly into the computer. Now, a lot of people think, oh, it's all done by computer in that case, but it's not. It's, it's just as much hand-drawn work has to go into it. You have to have all the life-drawing skills that go with that. So that's why it gives that traditional look that still looks as if it... I don't think anyone could tell that that wasn't done on paper, whether it was done on paper or whether it was done directly into the computer. But obviously there's lots of advantages in doing it into the computer because you immediately have all those assets uh, there which could be passed seamlessly through the pipeline to people like Darren and Sam uh, and you don't have all the scanning in of the paper drawings and all that stuff of things. So... Yeah, it was it was a big revelation that, and and kind of saved the production because it, it saves quite a bit of money doing it that way as well. And also, you did a bit of traditional drawn animation yourself. You you couldn't resist the opportunity. Actually, I didn't. I didn't animate on this one. Didn't you? No, no. Oh, I thought you did. No, oh, I thought you, you took a scene for yourself or a shot for yourself or something. No, I didn't. I've have, I just have been doing on uh, their next production, but um, no, uh, I was like the, I was think of it like a conductor in an orchestra mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, just making sure that all these incredibly talented people uh, you know had the best advice and support and and everyone was so committed on it it was unbelievable because mm -hmm. it's such a personal story we really couldn't you know get this one wrong so. no indeed in that case bringing Sam into the story for a bit then obviously mm -hmm. there's uh, there is 
computer elements in here, the CG here, uh, but you're mixing it with the just traditional drawn animation. Yeah. Can you talk about that process and also how you're collaborating with Roger? Yes. Well, it's also it's quite um, a difficult process because CG is renowned for being, you know, quite like uh, sharp edges, uh, kind of like plasticine or kind of photo real look. So it's um, a little bit of a challenge to achieve this kind of you know, the hand drawn textures and that kind of thing. So um, we did quite a lot of tests and lots of back, back and forward to it, but. Um, for the say the main element of CG of the film, which is kind of the vehicles and that, um, like the planes and a milk float, um, we approached it kind of. We tried to look at it in the same way as it was being done in two D. So when we get the two D, um, when it goes to compositing, they get like a, the line pass, their pencil drawn line. They get the colours, they get the textures that are added to it. And so um, in the CG, in the kind of the three D world that we've got, we decided to look at it the same way and so from um, like a 3D object, so we built Ernest's milk plate for example, um, we were able to take like an outline and the the lines from that um, as a separate layer yeah. and then another layer would be the colour and then another layer would be the textures and then that was all kind of combined together to achieve the same effect. And then uh, because we're in CG and we've got those tools available to us, we're able to like um, use some of the kind of more digital effects to our advantage so we can kind of the lighting information from that um, and we've also got the like perspective kind of the pristine perspective of it which is uh, obviously something quite hard to achieve in 2D if you're you know drawing every frame especially if it's like a, a milk float coming towards camera or a plane flying into the distance to kind of retain that um, the, the solidness of it you know so that's um, that was the main aspect of the CG and the way we approached it but um, as we're kind of uh, exploring this, there's lots of other tools to the CG um, that things like this could be really useful for the film. So uh, one of the things we did is we built uh, the house that it's set in, all in 3D, all in kind of real world scale, which meant that um, Roger could take an actual camera into uh, the house, the space, and position it as he wanted. And we could recreate the panels of the book uh, as though it was being shot in live action. And then that can go to the background artists to draw over. They might adjust it to go, well, this doesn't look quite look like Raymond Briggs, although this is maybe how it would look in real life. We need to kind of tweak this or we need to do this. But a lot of the time, we're able to kind of take that accurate perspective and, um, and draw it out. And, that, and it, it gave you kind of like, a, like happy accidents and that you would see, well, instead of being in this one room, we can see down the hall and we can see like Ethel coming in or... Um, Raymond might give us uh, like um, information about oh there's this step down into the scullery and so that's kind of built in and then that kind of goes back to the animation and that comes in there so we've got this like, tool we can use to um, really kind of make the, the house become like this character to the, the film yeah so that can come back to Roger how did that inform you because obviously when we started off there wasn't a huge amount of CG in the, in the film but it grew and grew and grew as we went along when we didn't realise what potential yeah. it had yeah, we, uh, I remember the discussions we had, and it was just going to be the the room, the main room, which is the kitchen. By the way, the kitchen is not the one with the sink in. That's the scullery. It took us a while to <laughs> get that into our head. The kitchen is where the, the old range was and where they, they spent most of their time because that's the only warmer room in the house. Um, yeah, we were just going to do that, and then somehow, oh, well, we might as well do the sitting room, and then... we did the lower floor and then we did the upper floor and then we did the garden and then we because the, the houses are all the same in the street we, you just repeat, repeated them mm. um, but they weren't uh, they were just a guide for the layout the layouts artists didn't just trace them off no not at all exactly uh, there was this, you know to give that hand feel to it uh, there, there was that human inconsistencies mm. put in uh, and then then we even got the other streets at the beginning, you know, where the where she's doing the dusting, yeah, uh, and that was all. That was all really, really useful. Um, yeah, and and that that thing about putting because uh, Raymond drew us a, a a map of the house downstairs and upstairs, and that thing that Sam's just mentioned about the step down from the kitchen to the scullery, we didn't know about that to begin with. And then Raymond suddenly mentioned it, and oh yeah, great! And that gives such character to the animation because that bit where the cheese ra rationing comes in, and he, he rather uh, flamboyantly steps down, you know, uh, and it, it just 
gives the gives the animator something to work with. It's mm. really nice. Okay, we we'll bring it on to Darren then, obviously from a texture point of view, and mm. also painting point of view. You also work on a lot of the backgrounds as well. Yeah. Um, you know, you're working digitally, but how how do how do you actually how are you working with production? Um, well, from my understanding, uh, when I was first given the task, the backgrounds were hand painted watercolors, yeah. and I didn't do that. <laughs> so I use Photoshop and digital tools, various digital tools. So it's replicating the texture you get from. Not only the paint pigment, the paper, the brush stroke, all that, and the digital stroke or digital media. But the fundamental principles are the same. So, in an example, it's all about what colors, about layering light to dark. Um, you blend colors by layering over oranges, blues to create new interest in um, hues and textures, and that's the exact same approach. I dealt with in painting the back rooms for oh, the house, the seaside, the allotment, yeah. yes. the blitz scenes. Yeah, there's quite a few in there. So yeah. how did you approach, obviously we, you, you actually created quite a lot of hand um, painted watercolour elements to be put into the film as well, so you're passing that to Darren as well, aren't you? And that's a <coughs> <your> reference. <laughs> Yeah, um, to, to keep consistency, uh, the wallpaper in particular was, you know, uh, very textured and uh, rather than doing it over and over again for each background, we had a, a swatch that was put mm. into, the, into the background uh, and distorted into the perspective of the shot. Uh, so that helped a lot. Um, but the, yeah, there's all the textures. The textures we had to do was amazing. There's 600 and some 80 backgrounds, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's a hell of a lot, lot of work. And then, of course, there's all the colour textures um, of the clothing. Uh, I think we had mm -hmm. um, over 300, 300 model sheets to do. Because when you start off, you think, I thought in earnest, oh, this will be a two-hander. <laughs> uh, but, of course, they age. Uh, and there's Raymond in it, and then there's all the other characters, and they all have to have different clothing for the different eras. So it's not two characters at all, it's many, many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did you find texturing CG objects with um, some watercolour elements? Oh, there's, um, we used, um, at the start, and I think through, through the production, we used a texture painting software called Mari, in which you can use say take the elements, the watercolour elements that were provided from Lupus and we did a couple of ourselves. You can take the CG elements done by Sam and the team. Um, you have to unwrap the models so like a football so I'll lay them out flat so all them cars, all the curved surfaces they have to get unstitched essentially flat surface so you can paint them otherwise you can paint and stretches looks a little unsightly. Um, so elements then were hand painted, hand textured, um, projected on, um, used in the animation, so, so such things as like the doors, um, the cutlery, anything that moved that was a prop or a static element or wasn't human, mm. should I say, it was a CG, CG animated moment. And then matching those to the lighting of the shot. So you have a, uh, a vase, but then you paint in the texture and you have to paint the light information in as well um, to match the background. So yeah, it's, not it's a good collab, you know, going between teams, backgrounds, who's working on this, going to comp, where you put the lights, which is, is the light coming through the window. I mean, we had the layout for the backgrounds, um, the notes, the first thing to check. Is it daylight? Is it night? Is the light from outside or is the light on? It fundamentally changes. You know, you can start painting and then uh, the entire mood is shifted. So, yeah. Okay, so just one last question before we go to Q&A. So what was, at the end then, what was Raymond's reaction to seeing everything come to life? Yeah. Because uh, obviously, he, you know, that was his childhood, his family. <laughs> As parents, um, and then seeing it in such vivid ways, the book is quite stylized. This is very 
but actually much more vivid and much more dramatic. Yes. I mean, I must mention two people in particular. Peter Dodd, who did all the character uh, sheets of Raymond and Ethel ageing and, <laughs> and Raymond, and, and um, also Richard Fordry, he did a lot of the characters, and Robin Shaw, the art director on it, who's, who's amazing. Um, look to it. Most of the backgrounds were done in uh, Studio 352 in Luxembourg, but we, we kept some key ones, particularly the more sensitive ones towards the end, in-house, so that we could keep an eye on those, because we knew that they were particularly uh, going to be looked at by Raymond. Mm. Um, I mean, the trolley scene with Ethel, uh, he, he couldn't work on, uh, Raymond himself couldn't work on that for more than 10 minutes uh, a day, he said. But, um, yeah, that was quite a moment when we all gathered around that to have a look at it. Yeah. Um, but Raymond is absolutely over the moon with it. Yeah, he, he loves it. And, it, and he, he loves the artwork and everything, but he particularly likes the, uh, <coughs> the performances of yeah. Brenda and Jim Broadbent. Uh, he, he recounts a story of... He was in on the very first recording session we did way, way back, before we did the main recording. And... He was just in floods of tears throughout it because he thought his parents were back in the room with him. That's mm. how he described it. Um, yeah. Uh, we, d we did a Q&A with Raymond at uh, the premiere at the Curzon Mayfair, which you can see on YouTube if you want to check out his reaction. He holds up a very wet hanky. Yes, I think everyone else did as well, I think, at the time. Um, so I'll open it up to the floor. Any questions from the audience? A lot of people ask about that because there's a, there's a sort of difference in line quality that comes in there. Maybe that you're thinking of that. And they are really copies from the book. Uh, and, and the book has a subtle... Um, it becomes more sensitive in line quality towards the end from the beginning. And we, we kept that a, a little bit there. Um, yeah, that, that was quite a difficult one to handle. Yeah, those movies, yeah. yeah. Seen as well, there's less CG in these parts as well because that that That's scene, strange. especially on the trolley, is taken straight yeah. from like the panel. So we didn't use any CG previews for that at all. Yeah. Um, because it's got quite a, I don't want to say incorrect perspective, but it's a non-photographic perspective. But it's yeah. you know there for the mood, and so really, I mean, the the door CG, and we had to completely like make that match the perspective of the panel as opposed to kind of a real world thing. And so it's got that kind of unique look to it, yeah. I suppose, that's yeah. not in the other parts of the film. And it's very much how Raymond says he remembers that sequence, with the placement of his mother, the tissues, the vim. And, um, just getting that across, the starkness of it, seeing his mother laying there in that state. Um, you know, it hit us all, I think. I think it's a very still scene, isn't it? And it's quite. What's interesting about it is very quiet, very still, is the detail of the acting, which yeah. is actually see very e so very easy. I'm saying this. I don't do this animation, but um, you know it's very easy to do big acting. It's very easy to do big actions and everything else, but very very difficult to act a small moment of emotion. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what's so special about the animation at that point. Yeah, yeah, and, and the timing as well, of course. Mm -hmm. um, very important in the film. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it was a challenge um, actually creating a drama that arguably could be a, could have been done live action, but actually was so much better for being animation? But is actually a challenge as a drama to sustain that level of uh, of, of, of quality and, and subtlety throughout a film, mm. where obviously lots of other films animations rely on big action and and moments like that. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I remember someone asking why we were doing it in animation, and it's because it comes from a graphic novel, and I can't think of um, yeah. any reason why not put it into uh, in, in any other form. Um, but it is true that we did treat it more or less like a live-action film in one sense, mm. uh, in terms of cuts and, and performance. And also the sound guy said, uh, Adrian Rhodes, who was at Goldcrest, who does the Wallace and Gromits, which are you know, very cartoony. Uh, and I said, are you treating it the same way? And he said, no, I'm just treating it like an ordinary live action film. So it, it was a real joy to work on because these sort of opportunities to do a feature film 
of that sort of, of that nature don't come round very often, although this year has been extraordinary for animation. There's another film out called Red Turtle by Michael Didoktovic, which I think is on here uh, sometime soon, which you ought to catch as well, because that's also a very sensitive and adult animated film. Mm. Yeah. So what was the... Um, obviously, the film has changed a few things from the book. You've added... You, in the book, the glosses over, not so glosses over, but you don't see the blitz in the book, you just see the aftermath yeah. of the blitz. Yeah. So uh, you've obviously added a few things in for the aren't in the book, to just, just to add context. Why was that? Yeah, and at the beginning as well, a, a few more scenes there. And I've also linked in some scenes which aren't linked in in the book, just to get that cinematic flow through it. Yeah. With this one, it was unlike The Snowman. With The Snowman, we, were, we had to expand it to half an hour from quite a short book. With this one, it was a question of deciding what to take out. Mm -hmm. So there were quite a lot of lengthy dialogue shot, um, scenes in the book about decimalization and stuff, which didn't seem very cinematic. Uh, and there were a few things that seemed to repeat themselves that didn't require being put in the film. And so, yeah, because the film was set within this house and deliberately quite claustrophobic, it was quite nice to break out of that at some moments. Yeah. And obviously the wartime stuff is very vivid, dramatically. You know. And you know, the bits in the countryside and the V-Day v party, mm -hmm. uh, it's always like, oh, brother, we can get out. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah. So we did have to think quite a bit differently from how we did the snowman and, and the, the shorts. Uh, this was a feature film and it required that cinematic uh, expanse yeah. to it. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? Go on. I have one. Um, so when I was watching the film and working on it as well, I realised that a lot of the stories, um, you know, Raymond's not in there and it's obviously before Raymond was born. And myself personally, when I think about my parents, it's always things that I'm involved in. So do you know if Raymond went back and asked a lot of stories like from his parents, from when they like when they met and everything like that? Yeah, I th I, well, he must have done. Uh, um, the catalyst for him writing the, the book and drawing the book was that story of the duster. And he thought that was such a beautiful yeah. moment of chance mm. that, that the whole thing hang on, hung, hung on that. Uh, so yeah, he must have had it, and he, he um, the Alf sequence, which puzzles a lot of people. Yeah, um, like telling his son that he, all the age he was. Yeah, <laughs> he uh, he picked that up from when he, he used to help his dad on the milk round, and he heard overheard his dad recounting that story to one of his mates in the canteen. Amazing. So, <laughs> which which story? Yeah, the Alf, Alf uh, the story. trouble with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what's in some way? What actually? I'm going to ask this question. What's the legacy of the film now? Because it's been released. It's on yeah. uh, finishing chapter this week. Uh, the website will be updated at some point. Ethanolist dot com. Um, and oh, is it the movie dot com? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. It? And um, but obviously, you're also doing film festivals. There will hopefully be a life for the film as well. What what do you think the legacy yeah. is going to be? And there's a CD out uh, November the 11th with the Paul McCartney track on, which is a, a, a new track. He's only released this year. Uh, he's never missed a year without releasing something, and this is the one. Um, and then there's the DVD out on January the 2nd. And then hopefully, uh, we're taking it to uh, Palm Springs in January, and hopefully there'll be a new uh, American release. Mm. Uh, we don't know. Japan might pick it up. He's, uh, Raymond Briggs is big in Japan mm -hmm. and other places. So this is just the beginning, yeah. hopefully. Okay. <laughs> yes. And so what for you as well? What you're you're currently working on Bear Hunt, aren't you? Yes, that's uh, another Lupus film. Uh, Michael Rosen's Bear Hunt. You might know the book for ch children. Uh, I, I just did a little bit of animation to fill in because there's a lot, an awful lot of promotion work to do for Ethel and Ernest is going on and on, which I'm nice to do, but I didn't quite realise how much. <laughs> uh, but we had fantastic, um, I don't know if you've seen any of the press, um, a lot of press attention and really, really good reviews, mostly four star, a few five stars, so we're really, really pleased with how it's going. Excellent, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. If there's no further questions, anybody?
Oh, yes, okay. Oh, hold on there. I'll take one more question, then I will do that, don't worry. This is a very basic thing. I know nothing about texturing or seizure or anything like that. Um, with the, so, so for instance, with the, with the vials of flowers, mm. and when the, the flowers put into the vials, why is it that the move, move or looks is different texture to the painted on ones? Is that because you, that's a background? One's a background element, and the other is an animated so it's just element, the layers, then. And then. For the the colorings different may need to match the animation and campaign okay. color style, which would go through the comp. So it's it's that age old thing. You know what's going to move in the background because it's, it looks different. You know, like a like a. But this that um, you know we got pretty close. I think yeah. to to match in the ink and paint style to the well, I suppose the ink and paint got close match in the background style. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we go. Um, well, thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Um, you've all got feedback forms uh, to fill in, so please fill them in for BAFTA, otherwise, they'll kill me. And, uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and also, please also look at joining BAFTA as well. For those of you in the industry who are interested, there's lots of benefits to do so, uh, including free cinema tickets, which is the main thing that I uh, agree with. Excuse me. Um, so, thank you very much for coming. Uh, look forward to seeing more screenings. Thank you indeed.